We have the New York Times Iowa caucus results queued up. <laughs> For those that are here watching live, you can see what we have on the screen right here. But what do you notice? What do you, what do you notice in their uh, default breakout of the uh, candidates? I notice our buddy isn't there. Who wants to, who wants to say it? Yeah, no Vivek. On the Vivek is not included in the New York Times default breakout. You have to then click view all candidates to bring him up along with Chris Christie. I thought he dropped Asa out. Asa Hutchinson and Ryan Binkley. Yeah, yeah, Christie did drop out, yeah, but he's still okay. on the ballot. Dead ass, yeah. I don't even know who Ryan Brinkley is. Binkley. He was the Binkley. first person to do the full Grassley this cycle. He did all 99 counties. And, uh, did he really? He did. Oh, oh wow. Is he still running? Uh, no, he's, he suspended his campaign, but I think he still has a few folks going to caucus for him. And Really? And yeah. Hutchison's been out for a while. No, he's still in. He's still in? He's still in, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's... Okay, uh, well, that's kind of depressing, but, you know, more power to him, I guess. One yeah. percent. Oh, is he really? Chris Christie dropped out, but I, I do love that uh, Vivek is not included in their default breakout of the of the total reporting. Should be interesting to see what ends up happening because of that. It was the same with CNN and Fox News. Yeah, apparently what what Fox. So we did we did a, a ride along with Vivek today, and he showed me like a screenshot from his Fox News hit this morning. He's like, "What's going on, guys? Like, what is this?" Oh, and he, it, he pointed at the screen, and it just showed. It's a three. poll. Yeah. It was a poll of who are you caucusing for, and yeah. they did not include his name. Yeah. But the weird thing on CNN is when you clicked uh, the link and went there, it, the big article was Vivek's face. <laughs> I don't understand what was going on. I think if you go to CNN right now, and it would probably just show you Vivek. I guess that's it. But I suppose the, the, the big news and the big questions we can start talking about right now is Donald Trump versus Vivek Ramaswamy. This is like the big subject. For the longest time, everybody's kind of wondering how it is that Vivek is running against Donald Trump, but there's no fighting. And so we actually got to the point where I think it was Dave Rubin who tweeted that Vivek, uh, he, he's, I, I, I don't want to get him wrong, but Dave said something to the effect that Trump is working with or for, or I'm, so, with, uh, I'm sorry, Vivek is working with or for Trump or something like this. Yeah, that was a big narrative that was being pushed by uh, the DeSantis camp for, for quite a while. And, um, you know, I think Vivek was smart for, for a long time for not taking shots at, at President Trump. And uh, he, he kind of stayed above the fray in, in that fight. Uh, but President Trump certainly doesn't enjoy when people use his face or name for, for f you know, financial purposes. And uh, those T-shirts that Vivek was pushing with the safe Trump vote Vivek message, I think that was a little um, – I think that upset a few people, including President Trump, and rightfully so. Uh, President Trump has never liked when people use his name. He even sued little Mac Miller over the song Donald Trump. And so – uh, I think that was a, a rookie mistake made by Vivek, and it happened at an inopportune time for the guy. Yeah, so this is the story. I just Google searched the image. India West is the source. I don't know what they are, but this image is real, and it's Vivek with a group of young men, and they're wearing shirts that say, Save Trump, Vote Vivek. Look, man, I like Vivek. He's a, he's a good dude. He's a smart guy. He's a hardworking guy, but this, is, this was a mistake. This was, it's a, like, was a big mistake. I understand the, the, the message, like, okay, Trump's his life is at risk if the deep state really wants him to not be president that they'll stop at nothing I get that but like to to rely on that as a campaign message is a little lame like you got to be the best candidate not like oh that other guy is a problem so vote for me instead that just doesn't fly it doesn't it doesn't sustain my opinion Show yeah me why I, I mean look Vivek has a great thing going as if the deep state does really stop at nothing and and, and go after Trump and let's not even explain like the worst that could happen, we're going to be happy that it's not just Nikki Haley waiting in, 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 the, in the bleachers yep. so and Vivek is around. That was the argument that I overheard as he's doing radio interviews all day uh, with uh, Alex Jones, Bongino. He was like, the argument, the, I couldn't hear Alex Jones or Bongino, but you could tell they were like, Trump's going after you. Why would you run with this stupid shirt? And his argument was, Alex Jones, you just did 20 minutes. We just did 20 minutes together on how they're going to assassinate Trump. <laughs> oh, geez. So then what happens next? And Bongino, you just did a whole interview where you and Tucker talk about assassination of Trump for 30 straight minutes. Yep. So what do you what do you think is going to happen next? Game theory that out for me. So I think that's I, I, I don't think that's smart. I don't think that T-shirt smart. But that's the I think the strategy, the, the thought yeah, process the, the behind it. Right. The, the T-shirt yeah. is cringy, sure. But I thought Trump's response could have been better. I think he could have been a lot smarter about this situation. His statement today uh, made more sense. But he could have reached out to Vivek. He could have uh, sent out a message saying, "Hey, I don't need saving. Thank you." Uh, without kind of uh, the dividing a lot of people. As of course, uh, you know, Don Jr. was here just a couple days ago, and, and he talked about how we don't have a bench, and this kind of infighting I don't think is is productive. And I think it, it could have been handled 
handled totally different, in my opinion. Well, it is politics, and Vivek is running for president against against Trump, and he has stayed out of, uh, you know, kind of the firing lane uh, the entire cycle so far. That's true. And this was really his first hic- uh, hiccup and mistake, I think, of the campaign. And, uh, you know, President Trump is a fighter by nature, and he typically doesn't hold back saying things that are on his mind. And uh, that was probably the first thing that came to his mind yesterday. And so he put it out. And, you know, look, I think a lot of us do like Vivek. A lot of us do think he has a future in the movement and a future in the party. I don't think it's uh, this year. Uh, But I do think, you know, he's a young guy. And uh, when we're talking, looking at our bench down the future, I think Ron DeSantis st- stepped on a landmine this cycle and has no future after this. I, I think yeah, a lot of people totally saw agree. his Man. response, uh, and, and I think some people took offense to it because they kind of saw it as punching down, and, and they saw it as infighting. And, and, and to me, that's how just some people reacted to it. But, um, you know, again, he, it's a crazy situation, and um, a lot of people want it handle, handled differently. I think, the only smart, I think the only smart move here, quite frankly, is for Trump to release a Save Vivek shirt. <laughs> that would have been, yeah, that uh, would have been a meme. You know, that would have been funny. That yeah, would have been hilarious. Yeah, that's good. That is good. Yeah. And be like, I got you, bitch. Right? Save Vivek from <laughs> yeah. himself. Well, I, I want to make a point piggybacking off of what you said, Alex, um, with uh, DeSantis and the fact that he stepped on a li- landmine here. It's just like fascinating to me them. because, yeah, th- this is the first time I've ever felt that I liked a politician and hated their campaign. It's a very strange phenomenon. No. I mean, I don't even like the guy anymore. You don't like him anymore at all? Sorry, but finish your point. Yeah, no, well, my point was basically just that, and I've said this on the show before, I think that if Trump and DeSantis are both strong, that's great for the United States of America. I want both of those men to be as successful as possible. And then going up against each other in this cycle and DeSantis deciding to run has turned out to be a complete disaster for him and his campaign. And he ended up basically jumping headfirst into the politician wood chipper that is Donald Trump, I believe to borrow the the phrasing from Aaron McIntyre. And so there's a lot that DeSantis has done that I think is fantastic. I would like to see him have a strong future in politics. But unfortunately, I think his campaign has been a disaster. And I also say that as someone who's had friends work for him, people who I like, I think the people making decisions for DeSantis are really not uh, trustworthy. And I I think they're making bad calls. And this is the moment that I would like to uh, formally apologize to Will Chamberlain and Jordan Land- uh, and Jordan yeah. Chamberlain. Good, they're friends of ours. They're yeah. good friends of mine. Same. Will's, Will's great. A, Will's and, a good guy. And I Will's want to apologize because on the, on the show last week, I said that they were living in Maryland while working for Ron DeSantis, and that was not true. And so, Will, I'm really sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't know. I made a mistake. I read these articles. I, I, I assumed you were still in the area because you had been on the show earlier. But they were actually living in Florida at the time when they were working for DeSantis. So seriously, sorry about that, guys. I, I mean it. And when Will's the, one of the people I'm thinking of, Will's the man. Like I, I really like that guy. Yeah, I don't know how you get rid of Will, who's actually a smart guy, a competent guy, and then keep some of these other dumpster fires around. So, uh, yep. I, and, and, and this is what I said to Will: if they put him in charge, DeSantis would be polling way higher. Mm-hmm. He could be. He could have the campaign that Vivek is having. Granted, yeah. Vivek yeah. made this. I think this is a mistake Vivek made, but I still think he's doing really well. But I got to tell you, when I mentioned to you earlier, I don't even like Ron anymore. I got to be honest. It, it, Laura Loomer put out that video where she confronts him, and you know, it's it is. I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it is shocking to be confronted by Laura Loomer if you're if you're some of these people, right? Mm-hmm. But a, a, a question that uh, um, someone asked, and she also asked, was, "Why are you in Iowa when your state is is in a state of emergency?" And I was like, "Whoa, I, I didn't even realize." I looked it up. Sure enough, there's flooding and a disaster going on in Florida, and not only did he come out here. But correct me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing that he brought out his gubernator, his governor's uh, gu- gubernatorial staff as well. Yes. And I was like, whoa, 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 dude, dude, this this is not okay. Okay. He he would have earned way more political points by saying, I'm not going to be able to, to to campaign in Iowa. Understand why? There are people who depend on me. I will never abandon the people who voted for me. People of Iowa, blah blah blah. Instead, he was like, I'm out. He flies in, flies out, comes here, and then goes to campaign in a blizzard where all the stores are shut down. We were walking around outside, and, the, and the, it wasn't even snowing very hard, but the snow had come overnight, and the restaurants are closed, everything's closed, it's buried under snow. For what reason did he decide to come out here when people are canceling events? He, he actually abandoned his state during a state of emergency flooding and a disaster to campaign in a state that was dealing with its own weather. I was just, that pissed me off. I'm sorry, man. And weather that people from Florida have no idea how they have to deal with. Florida, Florida people don't know how to deal with ice and snow and cold and- yeah. As, 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 as a, as a, What's the gator yeah. guy going to do a, up here, huh? As a person, yeah, that's right. 
Lift so, your legs when you walk. So two things. One, <laughs> and press down when Joe you Biden step. That. <laughs> <laughs> but can you lift your legs that high in boots like that? Is the question. It was Sorry, fun. Ben, I, got, you... I have big boots. They're like the big polar boots. The Balenciaga. Ba- Baffins. Uh, yay. How big is the heel? Uh, it's pretty I'm, big. Oh, oh, they got their wedges inside. They give me about a good four inches. You know. <laughs> can I pull the audience real quick? <laughs> what do you guys make of a man that wears high heels in the campaign trail? <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I got a. I got a. Don't of, say that. I got a question for you guys. I, we were talking in the green room beforehand about um, basically the liberal economic order, most powerful force on earth, most powerful global government ever created. So if these guys, Vivek and Donald Trump, are saying like we're gonna, we're gonna disrupt it, my thought is okay. Well, then your life is on the line. So if you do win the presidency, you're gonna have to go into hiding or govern from like some secret location. And they were like, no, that would be like an abandonment. I'm like, but if you stay in contact with the people via internet video, be like, I have no choice but to be in a yeah. mountain base. What do you, do you guys think that's a good idea? You think it's unnecessary? What do you think? Going against the liberal world order? Well, I mean, they're talking about dismantling the FBI, which is essentially going against the liberal economic order. Well, so let's 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 preface this a little Muscle. bit. I know there's a lot of people who are probably uh, more general viewers. We've covered this quite a bit, but the liberal economic order is a system you can, uh, that was built after World War II. Ian brings it up quite a bit. It's a legitimate thing. This is not conspiracy theory. I know the media is going to try and claim it is. It's, uh, what is it, the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations? They might be involved. It was started in 1949, Bill and uh, they were like, this is going to guarantee we don't have World War III. They built American-led, rules-based economy is what they call it, and they built all these American military bases. They use American money, and they've been enforcing it. So they're like, these people are like, we've got to create a new world order. This liberal economic order is no longer effective. We've got to create a new system is where they've been, like the World Economic Forum is starting to step in. But this liberal economic order is kind of now being siphoned into this new world order that they're trying to, this global bank banking thing um and so, so, trump so has been like a kind of was kind of a bull like he kind of when he when he canceled look, the 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 trans-pacific partnership you could see that he was not playing that game he was and, not going to sell out the united states thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time